Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 68 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. I've been doing just a little bit of work, and I'd like to show you guys what I've been working on between last episode and this one. Mostly related to programming, a couple minor things I did on the quarry over here, just to get things up and running. You can see I went ahead and crafted all the ME interfaces that I needed, uh, hooked up all the power lines and the mining wells, and everything's pretty much ready to go. Uh, so the main thing I really did that was not programming related which is placing down these blocks so pretty much an extension of what we saw last time the only thing i want to make you guys super duper aware of is the following setup uh let's go ahead and turn on our power dun 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 and you'll notice that i've got um one set of cables that are using eight channels going into the one two three four five six seven eight me interfaces here and then this bundle of cable here, using all eight channels, goes into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So remember, ME interfaces that are touching each other will share power with each other, except for uh, the device that the ME interface is pointing at. It won't share data and power with that. So by pointing these two ME interfaces at each other, we keep them separate. Now watch what happens uh, if I go ahead and... Well, let's just remove this guy and replace him down as just a normal interface without any uh, cabling. You'll notice, and the same for this one, that wonky things happen. So what happens is this line here is using uh, all eight channels and it's trying to activate all 16 ME interfaces and it's not working because these guys aren't facing each other. Uh, but all we have to do, and it's really just one uh, block that we just need to have face at each other, we do that and then boom, you're good to go. Uh, it's, you know, just for uh, the sake of it, I had these two facing at each other totally like that, but you really only need one of them as you just saw. Uh, but with that now, all frame interfaces are good to go. Nice. Uh, you can see we've collected a bunch of goodies here uh, because I've been testing this thing for the last few minutes. Uh, if we take a look at our program, you'll also notice that I changed up a few things. We continue to have the forward button and the power toggle, so we can hit power there and it turns on and off the power. You can see that happening back here. And we also have the send items button, which I'm going to go ahead and do in a minute. thought I got rid of auto mode, but maybe I didn't, so I'm going to do that now. See you later, auto mode. There we go, properly gotten rid of this time. And you'll notice that I have cycle buttons here on the right. Now I decided to go with 5, 10, 20, and 40 as my cycle options. Uh, it just seemed like the right numbers to go with, but it's very easy to change inside the code if you want. Um, all you have to do is go right down here, dun 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 dun. So here's where we define the buttons, cycle times 5, cycle times 10, cycle times 20, and cycle times 40. You just change that and then this line, 5, 10, 20, and 40, and that just changes the number of times it cycles. Pretty cool, right? So let's go ahead and have it uh, cycle five times. Boom. Ta-da! Cycles remaining four. I was a little proud of that. So uh, you can see it's running down there. It's hitting bedrock. And... As expected, it's going to go ahead and wait about the 10 seconds that we had it set up for last time, and then it's going to move forward again and toggle down cycles remaining three. Sweet. So we can see very easily uh, cycles remaining is three. If we jump down here because we want to refresh what Minecraft's doing, no problem. It moves forward again and plows through the terrain. Wow, that is fast. <laughs> I have no idea what kind of power usage we're doing at the moment, but we're going to go back to our base here in a minute and see how our power is looking. But you can see we don't really have problems with this thing uh, hitting uh, water and lava. It just plows right through it. And then if lava and obsidian form after the fact, it's not going to break anything. Uh, cycles remaining one, so we've got one last cycle going. And then the cycles remaining text is just hidden when there's no other cycles remaining. Sweet. So uh, we let this thing go, and the stop button works too. So if I, you know, tell this thing to cycle times five and then hit stop, um, you'll notice that as soon as it's done with the current cycle, it'll jump straight to cycles remaining zero and everything will stop. And we should see that in a second. There we go. Sweet. So stop button works, uh, cycled number of times works, and oh wow, we've got a full ME drive, a 4K storage drive is full. This 4K storage drive is almost full. Um, I have not automatically implemented send items yet because I wanted to kind of wait, but I'm probably going to add that in so that, you know, maybe every five cycles it does a send item or at the end of, yeah, something like that. Uh, so speaking of send items, let's go ahead and hit that button right now because I want to see all this stuff light up. 
So, send items go. Ta-da! Nice, look at that. How cool, huh? So we should have a bunch of stuff filtering into here. That looks pretty good. Yeah, look at that, a bunch of copper ore showing up. Awesome. I'm quite pleased by this. Good. Bunch of other ores showing up here, ready to go. Let's check in here. We should have a bunch of ore ready to be processed as well. So you can see that's just kind of all sitting here waiting. It's being dumped currently into this chest where it's going to be processed by our sag mill and our um, furnace here, our alloy smeltery. We might want to implement a bit of a faster ore processing system now that we've got this crazy income of items. I mean, we're going to start getting lots and lots of ore very quickly, um, you know, as you can see. I mean, I just ran this maybe 10 times. Um, I might want to throw another acceleration card in there. That might not be a bad idea. Where is another acceleration card? By chance, do I have one? Nope. We'll get two sets of these. And then we can do that. Cool. How are we for pure certus? Not a problem. We'll let that thing cook up a little bit more of the Certus Quartz processors, and we can configure this guy with another acceleration card. Sweet. All right. So maybe we want to implement slightly better ore processing than just these two simple sag mill and smeltery, because to be honest with you, at this point, eh, it's a little bit not good enough. I mean, it's not terrible. It's just, you know, not great. So we'll have to figure out what we're going to do with that. Um, why don't I come back here in just a moment and we will poke around with how we might want to implement a better ore processing system. And while I'm at it, I'm not sure, maybe I want to do something along the lines of the cobble works like Soren usually builds, but I don't know. We'll see. But it would be nice to have a steady supply of sand and glass um, and other things like that because we do use a lot of glass and stuff and I'm constantly having to request it manually. So why did the drives not come back here? Clearly they made their way. See, I thought I figured out why the drives weren't coming back too. Remember the end of last episode. But, all right, so one's here. Maybe it's because power's off? I wound up changing the Tesseract's configuration a little bit, and that, there it is, they're back there now. So I should probably make it so send items keeps the power on for maybe a second or two after the send items function finishes. That's probably gonna be necessary. But um, I changed the Tesseract frequencies to be all number two now. I. I feel like there must be a, a frequency one tesseract that I forgot about that has items being allowed to be received, but I'm not sure. I didn't think I had any more tesseracts, but by changing them all to power two, I stopped losing items. So I'm wondering if there's somewhere that I put a tesseract, and you guys will probably like laugh at me and be like, "Dur, dire, you derp, you forgot about this one that you placed over here, and it's got items receiving. And then I'll read it in the comments and be like, oh yeah, and I'll go find it and fix it. But at least for now... I changed everything to frequency two, and these items stopped disappearing. So I don't know what was going on with that. Guessing there must be another Tesseract somewhere on frequency one, like I said, that's receiving items. So let me get prepared for some of the processing and building that I'm going to want to do. And then we'll be back in a minute to do some other cool stuff. All right, guys. See you in a few minutes. All right, guys, so here's what I'm thinking. Um, I can probably just disassemble or not even use the sag mill and the alloy smeltery here any longer. Uh, what I'd like to do instead is have a input chest maybe right here, which then routes items into three thermal expansion pulverizers. And the reason I want to use that is because I believe that they're going to be faster in the long run. So let's see. That's pretty quick, but let's see what we can do with a pulverizer. So what we're going to want is a top tier pulverizer. And for that, we're going to need, I believe, a resonant frame. Okay. So in order to get this, we're going to need some silver and some enderium gears. We're going to need a reinforced frame, which is going to need some signalum. Okay. And we're going to need 
some Electrum, and some Tin Gears. All right, so let's see, how are we for Electrum? Let's craft up about 30 more of those. And I don't think I've got a Signalum Auto Crafter just quite yet, because that stuff's actually a little tricky to make. Um, I don't think there's any tricks. Oh, there is a trick. Oh, Alloy Smelter, you can do it? Hmm, three copper, one silver, 10 redstone. That's probably doable. So let's do copper, three copper, one silver, right? I didn't know they added an alloy smelter recipe, so that's cool. And then 10 redstone. And that gets me four signalum? Okay, that's doable. So three, one, Ten gets me four. And we will place that in the interface that all my other stuff is in. So I guess that one. And I think that's going to top off my interface here. So if we want any more uh, alloy smeltery recipes, we're going to need to throw a new interface on the back here. And I think we might be capped out on stuff, so we might have to consider moving some things if we wanted to do that route, but we'll figure that out when the time comes. Let's go ahead and request it. So, if I wanted more Signalum now, for example, 30 of them, start, and that should start cooking. Sweet. All right, so now that that's going, I want to just get one of these, and eventually we're going to probably have six. So, let's get the resonant pulverizer. For that we're going to need a machine frame, which I know I'm going to just go ahead and craft like 10 of these because eventually I'll use them, right? And we can bump this guy up. We're going to want Electrum Gears. We're going to want uh, to craft this. Oh, we're going to want some Invar too. That might have to wait until this is done, huh? Well, what I can do to get things rolling. Ferris and iron. Resources aren't exactly a problem these days. We'll put this guy in alloys mode and I'm going to go kill a spider. I think one of the other pro projects I'm going to work on is to get it so that mobs don't spawn near my house anymore because the number of spiders outside is really becoming a nuisance. Alright. Cool. All right, so back to this thing. Uh, we've got six hardened frames. I'm going to bump those up to the reinforced frames. One, two, three, four, five, six. Beautiful, just enough. And then finally, we're going to want to go ahead and get some of the top tier, which I'm going to need some Enderium gears for. I was going to just do one of these at a time, but I figured, eh, let's go ahead and just do them all. Should not be. Nice, six, awesome. All right, so let's get a pulverizer going then. So I'm just gonna get one top tier pulverizer. We're gonna need some of these and we're gonna need, let's just get a bunch. There we go. But we're gonna make sure to use this guy for the type of machine. So we're gonna get a pulverizer that is resonant. This is gonna be the top tier pulverizer that's available. And I'm gonna go ahead and probably place him down right here. And I'm thinking I'm gonna draw power out of this test rack, which just happens to be right here. That way I don't have to run power over. So I don't think I have a handy amount of power nearby. I have lots of, you know, ME stuff and that would be an option, but I think for now we're just gonna run cabling. So this thing, Looks pretty good. And it's got some augmentation slots, which we're going to take advantage of. We don't need a redstone circuit because we always want this on. Uh, reconfigurable sides, sure. Automated output? Mm, no. I don't know if I'm going to need that or not. So let's look at the upgrades that we can place in this thing. It's very similar to the upgrade system uh, that we get with the dynamos. So if we take a look at upgrades, uh, we should find, there's lots of mods that add upgrades. That's what we find. Um, let's do this. We're also gonna want some thermal dynamic stuff because I'm gonna play with some of the um, 
new cables and conduits and flux ducts and all that kind of cool stuff. So here we go. We want the following. We're going to want fuel efficiency, no. Power output, no. Secondary sieve. This gives you a better chance at a secondary output. We might want that, but we're definitely going to want reception coils, which give you an increase in processing speed. So let's get some resonant reception coils. We're going to want a good handful of these while we're at it. I'm just going to get a bunch because eventually we'll use them, right? So let's do this. Tinker's alloy or bronze. So we'll get one of these. We're going to want some pyrothium. One of these. They're called augments, by the way. And one of these. Cool. So those three combined, plus we'll go ahead and get the sieve, the secondary sieve. So that's going to require some wool, huh? Great, because I have tons of wool. I keep saying I'm going to do a wool system, and I never do. So let's see. Oh, you don't want that kind of wool? Oh, that's rock wool, I'm pretty sure, that we need. Yes. Uh, rock wool... I want to say that you smelt up. Yeah, there's a way to get rock wool. I think you smelt up slag. Do we have any of that stuff by chance? No, but I'm pretty sure when you smelt it, that's how you get rock wool. Yeah, light gray rock wool comes from slag, which you can easily get from induction smelting sand. So I'm going to hold off on the rock wool one. We'll just go with the one sieve for now. Oh, you know what else I wanted was, let's take a look at the dynamics, thermal dynamics. We got new conduits and stuff, which are all pretty fun to use. I think for now, 800 RF per tick should be sufficient. So we're going to craft some leadstone flux ducts, one, two, three, and we're going to upgrade them to hardened flux ducts, and that should be sufficient. We're going to replace these in a minute with something slightly different, I think. Well, maybe. We'll see. There we go. So we've got power going in, and I'm going to insert these upgrades. So what this should, in the end, be is a massive speed boost to the pulverizer. Let's go ahead and drop some cobblestone in there, and boom. Definitely very quick. I mean, this thing is going to process like crazy. Nice. And I feel like that's faster than a sag mill, right? Definitely. So that's why I wanted to go this route. So let me craft a few more pulverizers, and I'm also going to craft some furnaces, and we're going to want a bunch of those things. So we're going to want five more of each of those augments uh, in total. So I'll come back in a minute when I'm ready. All right, so let's hook up hardened flux ducts under here. We're going to wind up doing this. We've got our resonant pulverizers. One, two, and again, we're going to take out the redstone and the automated output, and we'll put in one, two, three. Cool, and that's pretty much the same we've got here, and these guys come out, and one, two, three, and we've got room for the sieves if we ever want to put those in. Cool. Uh, for the resonant furnaces, One, two, three, and we can connect a power line down here. Now, by the way, this does drain more power, so you'll notice 800 RF per tick. Wow. All right, so maybe uh, the 800 RF per tick flux ducts is not the route to go for that. Uh, we might need something more powerful, which we'll probably look at in a minute. But for now, we'll be all right. Let's do this. Um, we're going to insert one, two, three. That brings me 400 RF per tick. These guys, we don't necessarily need like the secondary output or anything, so just the speed upgrades is really all we need. And this should smell pretty quickly. So if we were to toss this in here, boom, look at that. Yeah, that's fast. Nice, I like it. Cool. Uh, I might even wind up replacing this guy with one of these because it's just so much faster. But, I mean, this thing also does three at a time instead of one at a time. So, I mean, that's not too bad. I don't know, we'll see. But for now, that's cool. We're definitely going to want to upgrade these. So 
8, 16, 24 plus 12 is 36, right? So 3,600 RF per tick. So what do the redstone flux ducts do? 8,000. Much better than 800. So yeah, we'll probably do those. So let's take a look. I think what we're going to want is... So the these guys here are just electrum and hardened glass. So let's get 18 of them. And then we need to fill them with liquid destabilized redstone. And it's two redstone per. So let's do these guys. Cool. Bring over our fluid transposer. The redstone goes in. No, magma crucible redstone goes in. And then the fluid transposer here. And this should start making us the stuff we want. Meanwhile, I'll put this away. And that should be time to replace those. Almost. That should be enough. Darn it, I didn't want to. All right, so we've got this guy set to receive energy. We're going to replace just these conduits here. Let's jump into bat mode. That might be a little bit easier for me. And then it's the redstone flux ducts. Oh yeah, fancier. Cool. We'll probably just wind up connecting these right here. Why not? Nice. So these should all now be able to run no problemo. Let's do a couple more things. I'm thinking what I'd like is some fancy item ducts. So where would we get item ducts from? Tin and hardened glass. I'm gonna want a few of these guys. And let me sleep through the night. And there's one more thing we're gonna wanna get. Haha. -ha. Let's go ahead and get ourselves some of these. So, in order to pull items out of these machines, we're going to want not filters, but servos. Um, now, if you hold shift, you'll be able to see what this can do. So with a servo, uh, the basic one is not really going to be able to export too much. Uh, the hardened one is all right, but really to get something cool, you want to go with the reinforced one at least. So you're going to want some iron nuggets, some hardened glass, and some electrum ingots. That shouldn't be too hard to go for us at this point in the game. So let's go ahead and grab some reinforced servos. Uh, we're just going to want some more hardened glass, which I think I was cooking up. And you guys come with me to cook up more, please. Cool. So we're going to say servos, whoops, come back here you. Let's get a stack of iron nuggets and some servos ready to go. Reinforced ones, one, two. And we've got our item ducts here. You know what, I'm gonna want probably, no, I don't think I need another set. So what we're going to want, probably, is to have a chest. That may sit somewhere along here. We're going to have item ducts coming out of the chest. Into the top of these guys. And we're going to pop a servo onto this guy. And we're going to tell him the following. Um, he can export anything that lands in this chest. So we're not going to filter in any way. But what we do want to do is... We can do nearest first. I thought I'd be able to do something with these guys. Let's see. See, the higher tier servos allow you to speed boost the items coming out. 
but this should actually work. So let's try this. So if I were to drop this stone in here, and we activated this by saying always run, it should very quickly pull the stone out. And we get to watch this stone in a very cool way float over to the resonant pulverizers, start chewing them up. Sweet. And then we're going to export with item ducks to get these items out of here. So we're going to set this to be orange, orange, and orange. We're going to have these here, with these here. And we're going to filter this. Yeah, I'm going to have to probably turn these sideways. All right. And let me just make sure I've got everything I need here, and we'll be right back. And now, it's probably as simple as just activating this thing. So we'll say ignore, and the item should pop out and land in the nearest. Nice, redstone furnace. That's what I wanted to see. We're going to configure these guys. Now remember, they can auto-output still, so we're just going to configure these guys to output on the right. We're going to place an item duct here and here, and then I want an ME interface. Start, crafted, done. Here. And what should happen is items should wind up getting spit out through here and land in here. Awesome. So anything that gets uh, cooked, boom, dumps right into that thing. Anything that gets cooked in this thing, boom, gets dumped right into this thing. Awesome. That's what I like to see. Uh, now I might want to upgrade these item ducts. We will see in a minute. But I think so far we've got a pretty nifty setup here. This should actually work pretty well for us. So let's disable redstone controls so that these things are always active. So anything that lands in here, for example, smooth stone, gets pulverized, sucked out, dropped into here, cooked, and done. But you'll notice because these are all interacting, if this thing happens to be full, it'll bounce into any other one, and it'll pretty much keep them in use at all times. Awesome. All right, guys, before we wrap up the episode here, I do want to just real quick speed some things up. So I went ahead and cooked up some energized glowstone. We're going to drop some item ducks in there, and that will turn them into impulse item ducks. Awesome. Only sleeping at night, huh? Okay. So the impulse item ducks are going to push items through the pipes faster, and we'll see the difference here. We're also going to go ahead and use resonant servos because they will also push items through the pipes faster. Cool. So as this thing finishes up, there we go. Out of glowstone, impulse item ducks ready to go. Enderman checking out what I'm doing. Get out of here. Thank you. So impulse item ducks will be responsible for pretty much the same thing the item ducks were doing. We will go ahead and use the resonant servo right here. And we'll configure this thing to uh, much the same way. Uh, pretty much ignore redstone, aka always uh, extract. You can see with the resonant servo you get more filter slots, but we're not really filtering here. Uh, let's go ahead and see how much faster this stuff. Wow, that was fast. I don't know if you saw it, because if you blinked, you probably missed it. Boom. Super quick, pushing items through. Um, that's going to be awesome. So one thing I'd like to do is get this thing rolling. So let's kick this off. Cycle times 10. That should start some things. I'm going to let this build up. Uh, actually, I want to disable this thing is what I want. Cool. I think this ME export bus might wind up storing and remembering its configuration, but we'll find out. We will tell this thing to require a high signal, aka don't run unless I tell you to. Put the export bus on there. Aw, oh, he didn't remember his settings. That's okay. Uh, I'll get some more ores here in a minute. As a matter of fact, let's take a look. Or nothing in particular just yet, but let's see how this thing's doing. Oh wow, he's got six cycles remaining. Nice. This thing's cruising. Oh, you know what? We haven't uh, had an item send yet. 
should be sending items every, uh, I think I configured it so that every 10 cycles it sends items, or after all cycles finish. Yeah, that's what I set it up to do. So if we keep an eye on this thing, he's got three cycles remaining. And then, if you'll notice, we don't have any ores in here still just yet, right? Nothing in particular. Two cycles remaining. By the way, how's our power usage over here? So we're definitely draining power as this thing runs, but it's not too bad, which is good. One more cycle after this. Power is still draining pretty good. Now if we watch here, he moved forward once. And then because this is the end of the cycle, I made it so that every 10, or like I said, after it's completely done running however many cycles I told it to do, it should light up the send items button. Nice. And you'll notice send items turns off. And okay, so power turned off right away too. Did anything get stuck here? Probably not. So how are we for ore? Oh yeah, look at that, we got some ores. So iron, tin, gold, yellowite, copper, silver, ferrous, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I'm definitely missing a couple, lead, and shiny. That sounds good. So that's what we'll configure these guys to do. And this thing should be filling up pretty quickly with those different types of ores. And let's see how quickly this crazy contraption that I just built here will process things. So that's pretty much what we're looking for. Cool. So that looks all good. Now all we have to do is tell this guy to ignore redstone and boom. Notice, by the way, that it's not sending items anymore because there's no room in these inventories. Awesome. Wow, that's fast. Now when this thing has a slot available, boom, another one goes down. Oh, that's cool. So we definitely have a very fast and high powered way to process our ores. And I think the redstone furnaces are definitely faster than the pulverizers, so we have no concerns about, you know, a backlog really occurring here. Nice. Cinnabar, huh? Where do we get cinnabar from? You get that from gold? Really? Since when do you get cinnabar from gold? Well, that's a nuisance. We're going to have to set up uh, some kind of export for Cinnabar. Yeah, I might have to wait until next episode to configure that. I have a pretty good way to do it, though. All right, guys. So for now, I think what I'll do is wrap up the episode. We definitely have a better ore processing system. I'm going to let this thing cycle 20 times. Nice. And uh, what we'll do is come back next episode and maybe work on a cobble works or who knows, there's a couple other things I might want to get going too. Uh, definitely need to set up a filter for Cinnabar. What I'll probably do is just have, um, you know, maybe exports out the bottom for, yeah. What I'll probably do is have a filter here. Maybe I'll just do it now real quick. You know what? Yeah, let's do it right now real quick because I can do a filter. Um... We're going to want one that can handle whitelist. Uh, let's do, yeah. Let's do the hardened one. That should work. So filters won't extract items, but they will tell you what items are allowed to land inside a spot. So for example, if I go down here, and I put this impulse item duct right here, I can put a filter on it, and we'll whitelist Cinnabar. Cool. So now Cinnabar is the only thing that's allowed to go in here. And we'll run some impulse item ducts down like so. There we go. Cool. So that will allow that to work. There we go. That should fix any 
filter issues that we have. Are you guys still running or something? Oh, right. I never uh, <laughs> configured that guy to have a channel. Uh, so I'll do that too. Cable. Like, why is everything stopped? Oh, Dire Derp. Yet again. All right, so for now, Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We will come back next time, like I said, and do all kinds of cool stuff, hopefully making this configuration of awesome things that much better. There we go. And these guys should clear out now. And these guys should clear out as well. Sweet. All right, guys. Take it easy.